Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's Planner Lex and I'm coming at you with a weekly plan with me. Yay! Has It has been some time. I don't even know if I ever did a weekly plan with me on this channel, but here it is and I'm super excited because it's not just any regular weekly plan with me. This is going to be a QA. and a I'm finally answering those questions that I practically begged you guys to ask me and I appreciate those of you who did, so I'm going to give you all a little shout out and also try to explain what I'm doing in my plan with me. Let's see if this goes well. So I'm showing you my previous spread and flipping to the next page. I'm using these Week on One page by Lotus. A lot of people use them and probably for a reason because they're awesome, they're simple, and I like that I've recently found a way to decorate them in the way that I like to. And speaking of decorating, the first question comes from Rosie at Rosie's Planner, who also has an Instagram, by the way. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. She's an awesome, sweet, sweet, sweet planner girl who has such an amazing heart and collection of planners. And yeah, so she asked me, do you black... <laughs> Do you back plan? I almost said black plan. And yes, I do because I'm black. <laughs> but yes, I back plan. Um, Not as much as I used to. I actually used to do an entire like, um, what you call it? Like memory planning with Erin Condren kits and stuff, which is way too expensive and hard to keep up with. So now I pretty much just take my stickers and kind of like make certain events pop after the fact especially those that I didn't plan in the beginning so that's kind of how I back plan for the most part um, and I do like to make sure all my spreads are a good record of what I did that day so just to catch up with what I'm doing the plan with me I have my little planning cards there I have a planning routine and a weekly ref reflection so the first thing I'm doing is um, checking out my Reflecting on the previous week, that's what I'm doing actually. Um, so yeah, so I'm just kind of deciding what my wins, <clears throat> well, my wins, my lessons learned, and any highlights of the week. So the next question again is from Rosie. She's awesome for giving me multiple questions. Um, she asked, What's my all time favorite planner? And I think my all time favorite planner, um, it's tough because I love, love, love my Giglio Croco. That's definitely like way up there. But the Mulberry is starting to steal my heart. I don't know if you guys have noticed how long I've been in it pretty consistently. Switching out for very short periods of time. Um, I don't know if that's because I just love the A6 size so much. Or if it's genuinely because I love that particular planner. Probably a little bit of both. So I guess if I were to have like... The best of both worlds would probably be an A6 Julio Croco, but at the same time, every time I go to trade it out, I'm just like, mm, can't do it. So I don't know. Between those two, definitely for sure. And I guess she, oh, she said, why? Black Croco is just sexy. Everyone knows that. And then the Mulberry Agenda is so chic, but it's not like as common as Louis Vuitton, so it feels like it's unique and chic. Um, where am I in this plan with me though? Looks like I'm starting to, oh no, looks like I'm still reflecting on the week. So let's jump into the next question from Rosie again. She asked me, what was my first planner? Now, there's so many different firsts here. Um, I would say my first experience with a ring bound was one of the recollections planners from Michael's. It was like one of the blue ones. Um, but my first like real, like more like real one I guess was a Kiki K that I asked my mom to get me for Christmas the polka dot one um yeah so if you scroll back into my page you'll see it way 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 down at the bottom um so yeah I'm looks like I'm still filling in my July review but I'm just kind of adding in um based on the previous week I think figured that if I like gradually fill in that sheet it will be way easier at the end of the month if that makes sense um it's kind of a new to me step so we'll see at the end of July how it works um as I'm gradually filling out that that sheet I love that sheet um it just really lets you reflect on um how you did in the month because a month goes by and you don't remember what you did and this is why I like that if that makes sense 
So I'm finishing with that reflection. And what am I doing next? Um, pulling out my A6 planner, putting away the weekly reflection card, and probably going to move on to the next step, which is, girl, I can't read that. <laughs> Can you guys read that? I don't know. Well, I'm probably going to start to basically gather different tasks for the week, filling in my appointments, things like that. So I think you guys can pretty much gather that I'm pulling in any appointments and events from my monthly spread. And then I'll also be pulling in the pre-planned tasks that I put in on the next page that you'll see in a minute. So while you guys watch me do that, the next question is from Blush and Blue, Donna from Blush and Blue. She asked me, do people outside of our planner world make fun of you as they do me? And the answer to that is yes and no. No, because I barely tell anybody. And if I do, I definitely like minimize the obsession to like, oh, it's just a little stationary. Oh, I just, I enjoy organization, I like to say. Like I don't go into detail and rarely do I show people my actual accounts. Um, but when I do, they, they're, they're like, yeah, that's cool. But, you know, it's they're probably either like, what the heck is she talking about? Or they're like, wow, that's a little obsessive. But I've never gotten a specific, like, making fun of you kind of reaction. More just like a teasing, like, oh, what are you going to go do plan now? Or like, oh, my little planner girl, people like to say to me. Like, or just like reference my planning account, Planner Lex. Um, so that's pretty much what I get. I don't really allow anyone to know enough about me to like really insult me. And why should they? Planning is actually really cool. Obviously, you guys know that. So I'm pulling in some stickers into my spread just to make certain things pop. I'm still trying to get the perfect balance of like transparent dots, stickers, and highlighting. Um, I'm used to just stickers and then once the transparent like dots and shapes came into the mix I was like wait how am I gonna put both it just seems like it can just easily be overboard if you use too many stickers um, which is so easy to do when you love stickers like me so the next question is what got me into planning originally and the answer to that is school really you can't really survive school without without organizing yourself in some way um so I started out with just like the plain target planners like the really simple monthly and a horizontal weekly um and then once college hit I was doing lots and lots of research on like dorms and like basically how to survive college because I was super anxious about it and I stumbled across girls who would like plan in their little like Lily Pulitzer planners and it just kind of spiraled from there I just kept finding more and more videos Lily Pulitzer and Erin Condren and then Happy Planner and just down the rabbit hole and now look at me <laughs> so adding a few more stickers here and there keeping it simple um and then the, ne <clears throat> the next question is from Carrie is Planner Carrie my girl Carrie she asked me do you have a designated time to plan during the day or week? Um, typically, during the week, I would say I definitely try to plan out my week um, on either Sunday or Monday mornings, even Monday afternoon. Um, I try not to do it any later than that because I start to feel like lost a little bit. <laughs> but um, it's not always happening, you know, according to plan. And then during the day, it would either be right in the morning if I wake up early enough but for the most part I'm planning my day after work I've noticed um after work or the night before pretty much during the day is my times but otherwise I do keep my planners open for the most part so it's not like I'm not um looking at it throughout the day but to specifically plan it's gonna be as I said um weekends um mornings if I can right after work and then at night before I go to bed um, speaking of before I go to bed, if you haven't seen my evening routine, please be sure to watch that, my evening planning routine, which is super, super um, peaceful, and I've been enjoying it a lot so far. Um, so yeah, so what am I doing now? My planner, plan with me. It's 
kind of hard to juggle this, but I enjoy the the option of a voiceover. So it looks like I'm still just filling in my important dates, important events and such, and gonna answer the next question, which is what is your favorite planner size and why? From Sonia at Just Your Average Planner Girl, who also has, wait, Just Your Average Planner Mom, who also has a YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out as well. Um, my favorite planner size is definitely like becoming a six really fast. It literally combines the best of like all the other sizes. It's just like it's just cute and small like pocket. Um hold on. I'm actually adding a couple stickers from the planner spot because I can't not have decorative stickers in my spread. So I've just been covering up the memo area with my little stickers. Um and also the priorities area and then maybe adding like a smaller box throughout the week. I find that that's just enough stickers to satisfy me without being too overboard. So back to my favorite planner size. Um, yeah, A6 is like cute and small like pocket, but pocket I could not write in, especially because I'm left-handed. So I gave up on pocket. Um, so it's like pocket. It's like personal in that it's like big enough to write in and also portable. So it kind of has that aspect to it of a personal size. But personal size is also hard to write in because the paper size itself is very narrow. Um, and then it's also really cool, compatible with like the A5 planner because it is, you can scale it up and down to A5. So it kind of has the same, I like to say proportions as an A5 sheet of paper. So I love A5. The only downside to A, I mean, I love A6. The downside to A6 is that um, it's not super widely used. So it's not the easiest to find planners themselves and also just like inserts and dashboards and things for that size. That's the only downside. So you might have to do more research than you're used to or do some DIYs and things like that. Um, so yeah. So just to backtrack a little bit, I used Undo to pick up a sticker. Um, if you don't know about that yet, it is like this liquid that just magically takes off stickers, the adhesive off of stickers, so that you can still reuse them and pick them up without tearing your paper. So if you're a sticker user um, and you mess up a lot, highly recommend investing in that. I think it was like $7 or something, and I've had it for over a year now. So now I'm pulling in my tasks from that July overview that I said. Um, again, if you haven't seen my monthly planning routine, um, you got to go check that out because that's how I pre pre planned my week. So as you can see, I'm pulling in the tasks from week two and that takes so much of the headache away of trying to figure out what I want to do in the week takes, save so much time if I've already pre planned it in the beginning of the month. So I'm doing that and then I'm adding in some like not like negotiable so let me backtrack a little bit. I'm putting non-negotiable tasks onto the week on one page insert itself. And then I'm putting negotiable tasks onto this sticky note just in case they don't get done. I like to have options. I like my tasks to be dynamic because I tend to be over ambitious sometimes or things just aren't mandatory like it's not mandatory that I get my that I do a pedicure this week it's something I want to do but if it doesn't get done I'm okay and that's why I'm putting it on a separate post-it note so if I get it done great if I don't I can always move the sticky note to another page so yeah so I'm doing that and then the next question comes from Shajarena I think that's how you say it maybe Shaharena I'm not sure one of those but she says or asks me how do you stay consistent with your planning system and I'm no expert on consistency it's actually my word of the year I'm really trying to work hard on being consistent this year but it's tough I tend to rely on motivation and inspiration to get things done but sometimes you have to just have grit and persistence um, but for my planning system I guess the best thing to do is just keep it fresh don't be afraid to change things as needed um, I like to make sure my planners themselves are visually appealing to me so that I want to look at it regularly. Um, um, and having routines is really helpful as well. So you don't have to like 
rely on your memory to know, okay, usually I do this step and then this step and this step. There's no room to forget things, things to fall through the cracks if you have it written down somewhere. And it's just kind of fun. I just try to keep it fun, light, simplified, um, and make sure things can be as dynamic as possible for the most part. Whether it's changing a cover, or changing deco out, um, updating my routine, which is something I actually need to do soon. Um, yeah, that's what I do. So it looks like I just checked out my content. Um, no, I was looking at my inbox, pulling tasks from my inbox, and just adding a few more tasks that I might want to get done this week. And looking at my content planner. Trying to see if there's anything else I might need to add. What else am I doing? See, like, if I didn't have that planning routine card, I'd, I think I would just willy-nilly add tasks in my appointments and then not actually make progress on my goals the way I want to. So it looks like now I'm checking my work section to see if there's anything that needs to be updated and added to my spread. Now I'm adding the dates, which I kind of realize I hate doing. I hate adding dates, so I do prefer dated inserts, actually. Um, but I'm just using those ones up until I run out as not to waste any paper. Things like that. I'm also kind of interested in trying another weekly spread, but I think I'll wait until I switch back to personal to do that. So I'm adding in a work task onto Monday, and let's see. Not sure, maybe I'm looking for a sticker right now or something, probably. And in the meantime, let's answer the very last question, which comes from my girl Anne Pen and, at Pen and Plans. She asks me, um, one thing you like and one thing you hate about planning. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good thing. And the first thing that comes to mind is I like feeling organized. I like coming up with a game plan. I like, I like the I, idealizing your plans even if they're kind of stressful but what I don't like is how easily it is to like go off the plan that you set again whether it's due to lack of motivation lack of inspiration um you know mental health things or even other people getting in the way of your plans I can't stand when well thought well set plans go awry somehow um, I don't know if you guys have heard the saying, we plan and God laughs. Yeah. So sometimes I'm kind of annoyed when that happens. God is having some chuckles sometimes with the plans that I created. Um, that's the, one of the main things. Um, I guess I could say I don't like that it costs money. I mean, it's worth it to me and I don't, I rarely hesitate to buy things planner related but I almost wonder if you were to add up every planner purchase I've made along the way, um, what other more beneficial or more important um, things I could have purchased if I didn't spend so much money on it. I don't know. I wouldn't say I hate that. I guess it's something I dislike. I dislike how expensive planners and planner goodies can be, basically. So that's all the questions. Um, and I guess I'll just chat and walk you through the rest of the plan with me. Um, adding my habit tracker, which this week I decided to track different health habits because, um, I haven't, I have two habit trackers, one for like general things and one for beauty things, but I realized I kind of need one to track health related things, which is probably pretty important as well. So I'm just going to do it on a week by week basis until I have a new month to set up a new habit tracker. So I'm just tracking a couple things and... That's what I like about adding this extra sheet between my week on one page is that I have room to take notes, to add sticky notes, things like that. So last but not least, I grab a mild liner and highlight the week, the current week that we're in with the sticker that I have at the top, the like a monthly kind of thing. Um, and I did it to match the sticker that I have. And that's the end of my spread. I hope you guys liked it. Hope you enjoyed this Q&A weekly plan with me. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Love you guys. Bye.